Tropical Storm Debbie is making landfall in South Carolina this morning, and it's about to bring some more problems both today and tomorrow across parts of the East Coast of the United States, anywhere from South Carolina all the way back into New England and even parts of Canada. The biggest concern over the next 48 hours will continue to be the potential for major flooding. One threat that's going to actually be more concerning today than it has been the last few days is the potential for tornadoes across parts of North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia, and then eventually by tomorrow, that threat will start to trickle into areas like Maryland, and then eventually go into areas like New York and New England. So in today's forecast, I'm going to nail down exactly where I think the greatest tornado threat will be over the next few days. In addition to that, we're going to be talking a little bit more about our next tropical system, because we could have another one heading towards the United States as we go closer to the middle of August. We are going to begin, though, with the infrared imagery with Tropical Storm Debbie, and this is some infrared imagery from very late last night, and notice right Right now, it's actually a pretty impressive storm. It was a lot more disorganized early yesterday, and the reason why is because we had a ton of dry air that was ushering into the center. You might remember if you watched yesterday's forecast, we had a really broad area of circulation, and really all the showers and even thunderstorms and supercells that we had were really just on the outskirts of Debbie. Now, it's become a bit more organized over the last 12 to 24 hours, and maximum sustained winds have actually climbed quite a bit. We got up near 60 to 65 miles per hour early this morning. Overall, though, it's really more of a flooding threat. Despite there being wind and some isolated power outages, all of this rain on the northern side of Debbie is really going to continue to penetrate several inches of rain over the next 24 hours. And then in, in addition to that, we're going to be watching for outer bands to develop just east of the center this morning and into the afternoon. And this will bring a localized tornado threat into Virginia and North Carolina, where I would not be shocked if we saw a small-scale tornado outbreak today. We've also seen some convection on the southern side side of Debbie back over near Florida and Georgia. For the most part, it's just adding on to the wound, basically, of there being rain there. It's not really too concerning, though. It is going to be winding down as we go throughout the day today. Now, the National Hurricane Center has not really changed their forecast much. It is a pretty large wind field when it comes to tropical storm force winds, but it's predominantly all offshore. So really, the only tropical storm force winds that are being felt are really along the immediate South Carolina and North Carolina coastline. Otherwise, it's mostly just offshore. As this moves inland today, we're going to continue to see this as a tropical storm probably throughout the afternoon as it has intensified a little bit over the last 24 hours it'll take a little bit to weaken and then eventually by friday morning this will be a post tropical cyclone but that does not mean we are done with tornadoes or even flooding rain we are going to continue to see that threat all the way through friday saturday and even into parts of sunday as this races off to the north and east and look how fast this goes i mean this is thursday afternoon this is by sunday afternoon it's all the way up closer to greenland so it's going to really race fast off to the northeast and then eventually after that we're done talking about Debbie so the good news is it's really by I think late Saturday we are going to be completely done talking about Debbie and I think all of us can agree we are finally happy to be done talking about Debbie after this weekend these are the computer models over the next few days not really much of a reason to show you this but I just kind of want to show you there is a pretty nice consensus that this will be staying over land so we're not going to see this go back into the Atlantic Ocean near New England there was initially some concern about that a few days ago but at this point not a concern now I do want to talk a little bit more about this tornado risk and then we're going to talk a little bit about the flooding and what's ahead really for the next several days with Debbie the tornado threat today is more interesting I think than the last few days because a lot of the tornado threat has been confined to the coast and that's mostly when we have water spouts that are coming ashore or even just a brief weak tornado right along the coast we haven't really had anything that organized though when it comes to supercells one of the reasons why is because there just hasn't been enough heating but once we go later into today i do think we're going to have more heating especially across parts of virginia and north carolina this could actually lead to a more organized threat for tornadoes now overall i'm not expecting a full-blown you know large-scale tornado outbreak this is a tropical storm and you know remember with barrel we only had like two tornadoes that were even over ef2 intensity we usually do not see tornadoes over ef2 intensity with tropical systems it's very rare so with this particular system i think today we're going to be seeing a variety of ef0 ef1 type tornadoes that are going to be crossing across parts of north carolina and as well as virginia the main concern this morning will be in north carolina just off to the north and east of raleigh and then eventually as we go into the afternoon i think that threat really increases across the board with any supercells that 
that can develop and also achieve enough heating. I think we're going to have a better shot for tornadoes anywhere in central and southeast Virginia, back into parts of northeastern North Carolina. By this evening, this threat's just going to continue. So we could literally have several hours of tornado warnings across the state of both North Carolina and Virginia. Once we go into Friday, this tornado threat starts to race back up to the northeast. We're probably going to see at least a low-end threat for a few tornadoes across Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, and perhaps even parts of western Massachusetts and maybe even western Vermont as we go into Friday morning and as well as the afternoon. Now, before I talk more about this threat, I do want to mention that I am not sure if we'll have a live stream for this today. It is one of those types of threats that could literally go all day today, and so there literally could be tornado warnings when we you know, have this video up all the way perhaps even until the evening. So I just want to mention that first off, and then second off, I'm with Connor Croft and Freddie McKinney today, um, and so I'm not sure if I'm even going to have a live stream today. So it's kind of one of those days that you just want to make sure that you have multiple ways to receive alerts and have a tornado action plan in place. I will try my best to go live if I'm able to. Here's what it looks like in the Carolinas, back over in South Carolina and Georgia for this morning. We're going to continue to see some showers across you know areas in South Carolina like Columbia and Myrtle Beach. Heaviest of the rainfall will be in far northern South Carolina, and then eventually by this afternoon, we're just dealing with some showers that are going to be pretty spotty overall, and then eventually Eventually, as we go into Friday, I think we are completely done in South Carolina with additional rainfall. Here's what's left of in terms of total rainfall accumulation. Most areas like Florence and northbound will have the worst of the rainfall, probably an additional three to six inches of rain between now all the way through tomorrow morning. And we also could see a couple of bands redevelop on the south side of Debbie back over near Charleston, and that could actually lead to an additional one to three inches of rain. And I wouldn't rule out some spots higher than that. The HRRR showing up to eight inches of rain, but I think that's a bit too high for this particular um, event. Here's what we're looking at for the future radar today across parts of North Carolina, Virginia, and even far north, uh, for farther northbound. This is what we're looking at for the outer bands. This is where our greatest tornado threat is going to be over really the next several hours. We're going to have these outer bands coming on from offshore, going onshore into North Carolina. Initially, that's where our tornado risk is going to reside with any low top supercells in North Carolina. Eventually, by this evening, the tornado threat will start to move into parts of south and southeastern Virginia. Virginia, and again, even parts of eastern North Carolina. This tornado threat is going to be mostly, again, just a few tornadoes that are brief and on the weaker side of things. I can't rule out a strong tornado, but it should be a pretty low risk. By this evening and eventually into the overnight hours, I think the tornado threat does at least go down a little bit. We might see an isolated spin-up back up in Maryland or even parts of maybe, you know, Delaware, for example, on Friday morning, and then eventually by Friday afternoon, this will start to move to the northeast. It'll probably be more of a wind threat on Friday, but if anything can be a bit more discreet, we could see another isolated tornado somewhere back up in New York, New Jersey, or again, perhaps Western New England. Here's a closer view of that timing as well. So again, just notice those low top supercells during the afternoon producing that potential for again, a few tornadoes, mostly around and just east of Raleigh back through Greenville. And then eventually as we go into Friday morning, that threat will be mostly across the coast back near Virginia Beach. And then we're done talking about Debbie in Virginia and as well as North Carolina. Now, unfortunately, we are going to be talking about major flooding, especially especially since we have a lot of higher elevations across Virginia. This is additional rainfall between now all the way through Friday evening. Many areas are going to be talking about the potential for, again, a widespread area of three to six inches of rainfall. We'll also be watching for some isolated spots that could pick up as much as over a foot of rainfall. So make sure that you're continuing to watch the weather very closely. I'm not saying that this is going to be a extreme catastrophic event at this point, because a lot of things did change to the forecast over the last few days. But I would at least say just don't let your guard down if you're anywhere in Virginia or even North Carolina, as we could still see some significant flooding. Now, beyond today, we are not done talking about the tropics because we could have another system that develops in the Atlantic Basin as we go later into this upcoming week. But first off, in the United States, Debbie will move out by Saturday night, so most of the activity will start to wind down across the East Coast. High pressure will start to build across a large chunk of the United States, leading to a relatively drier weather pattern. Parts of the Central and Southern Plains, though, as we go into early next week, actually could be a little bit wet with some showers and maybe some thunderstorms. Once we go later into the week, we could see a return of severe weather somewhere across maybe the Midwest or even maybe even the Central Plains, but it does not look like anything out of the ordinary. And then once we go into next weekend and beyond that, it becomes relatively uncertain of if we will see any more significant severe weather events in mid-August. We might not. Uh, right now, the GFS model not really hinting at anything like that, but look down here to the southeast of Florida, a little tropical system by the, uh, next Saturday, which again, this is 10 days out, so things could definitely change. Now, granted, this is a possibility, but it is still very far out. We'll have to watch this closely. Right now, the GFS model has us avoiding the United States
States with the Bermuda High out to the east. That should kind of turn it away from the United States. But don't forget, what with Debbie, that actually, that Bermuda High moved further west. And then eventually it moved into Florida. So just keep that in mind. Things could change over the next several days. But we could see our next tropical storm or hurricane develop somewhere near the lesser Antilles. Or even the greater Antilles as we go very late into this week. Now here's the remainder of the rainfall from the GFS model across parts of the northeast and as well as back through the mid-Atlantic. Again, just kind of give you a picture of what to expect. Many areas still going to see upwards of one to three inches of rain. Some isolated locations back up in New York could see over three or four inches of rainfall. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.